Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair devotional. Do you have siblings? Maybe older brothers or sisters, younger brothers or sisters? Or if you're an only child, maybe you can think about cousins, friends, next door neighbors. Do you always get along with your siblings or your friends? I have a younger sister, her name is Jen. And when we were kids, oh man, could we fight? Little things would just get us going because no one knows how to push your buttons and annoy you like your siblings or a best friend. And my sister sure knew how to do that and I would get so annoyed and so frustrated with her. Maybe you've had those moments or maybe you're the one who can do a little poking and annoying and maybe you're trying to get attention and your older siblings going, would you just leave me alone? Well, we're going to read about some famous siblings today. In fact, they were twins. Are you a twin? Do you know any twins? This is a story about twins, but do they look much alike? Here's our character for today. So what do we see here? We've got a brother with red hair and a brother with brown hair. They're hugging, so that's a good sign, right? We've got a bowl of something here, but it looks like food because it's got steam. We've got some sheep. And our key phrase here says, I have seen your face and it is like seeing God's face since you have accepted me. All right, who are our famous twins? This is Jacob and Esau, Jacob and Esau. And they were the twin sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Our characters from the last two days. So twins, Rebecca and Isaac have twins. Esau was born first, but Jacob tricked Isaac into giving him the family blessing instead of Esau. Years later, Esau sent a messenger to tell Jacob he was coming to meet him and Jacob was afraid. He asked God to be with him and when the two brothers saw each other again, Esau forgave Jacob. Oh man, let's dive into this story. Do you have your Bibles? If not, pause, go get a Bible and push play when you're ready to begin. We are going to start in Genesis 27. Now Jacob and Esau's story takes up a lot of chapters in the Bible. And so we don't have time to read all of it together. So in your free time, you can read the rest of these stories for yourself. So we are in J we, we're in Jacob. We are in Genesis 27, right? So Genesis the first book of the Bible. All right. And then chapter 27, our big number 27. And we are going to start right at the beginning. All right. So we have fast forwarded in Jacob and Esau's lives to their adults now. All right. And remember now their dad, he, Isaac, it starts out by saying in verse one, when Isaac was old, his eyes weren't very good and he couldn't see clearly. So one day he called his oldest son Esau to him and Isaac said, son, Esau answered, here I am. Isaac said, I am old. I don't know when I might die. So take your bow and arrows and go hunting in the field. Kill an animal for me to eat and prepare the tasty food that I love. Bring it to me and I will eat and then I will bless you before I die. So Esau went out to the field to go hunting. Rebecca was listening as Isaac said this to her son Esau. Rebecca said to the son Jacob, listen, I heard your father talking to your brother Esau. Your father said, go kill an animal and prepare some tasty food for me to eat. And then I will bless you before the Lord before I die. So obey me, my son, and do what I tell you. Go out to our goats and bring me two young ones and I will prepare them just the way your father likes them. Then you will take the food to your father and he will bless you before he dies. But Jacob said to his mother, Rebekah, my brother Esau is a hairy man and I'm not, I'm smooth. If my father touches me, he will know I am not Esau and then he will not bless me. He will place a curse on me because I tried to trick him. So Rebekah said to him, if your father puts a curse on you, I will accept the blame. Just do what I said. Go and get the goats for me. 
So Jacob went out and got two goats and brought them to his mother. Then she cooked them in a special way that Isaac enjoyed. She took the best clothes of her older son Esau that were in the house and she put them on the younger son Jacob. She took the skins of the goats and she put them on Jacob's hands and neck. Then she gave Jacob the tasty food and the bread she had made. Now let's hit pause here because there's a couple things we need to figure out. First, what's the big deal about this blessing that Isaac is going to give? This blessing was like the way of saying, here is your inheritance. Here is, um, I have chosen you to take over when I die. It was a special blessing. And at this time, in the Bible times, it went to the firstborn son or the oldest son. And since Jacob and Esau were twins, they were technically the same age, but Esau was born first, and so he was a few minutes older. So that made him the oldest one. But then there's this other element that we see here, and this is the dangerous part. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like someone was playing favorites? Maybe we said the very common phrase, that's not fair. Hmm. Isaac and Rebecca each had a favorite son. Uh-oh. Isaac really connected with Esau. Esau was a hunter and he and Isaac just clicked. And Jacob, he was a shepherd and he and his mom, Rebecca, just clicked. Now sometimes we do get along with one person better than another person, but it's dangerous when these parents are playing favorites, isn't it? Because now what's happening? Rebecca says, Jacob, my favorite, we're going to help trick your dad into giving you the blessing instead of Esau. And that's why they're cooking the food and having Jacob put on Esau's clothes and put goat skin on so that he feels hairy like Esau. Oh man, there's, there's problems when we start playing favorites and we start trying to trick. I feel like we've got some drama coming up. So let's see what happens and pick up in verse 18. Jacob went into his father and said, Father, and his father said, Yes, my son, who are you? Because remember, he can't see very well. Jacob said to him, <coughs> I am Esau, your first son. I have done what you told me. Now sit up and eat some meat of the animal I hunted for you, then bless me. But Isaac asked his son, how did you find and kill the animal so quickly? Jacob answered, because the Lord your God led me to find it. Then Isaac said to Jacob, come near so I can touch you, my son. If I can touch you, I will know you are really my son Esau. So Jacob came near to Isaac, his father, and Isaac touched him and said, your voice sounds like Jacob's voice, but your hands are hairy like the hands of Esau. Isaac did not know it was Jacob because his hands were hairy from the goatskin and felt like Esau's hands. So Isaac blessed Jacob. Isaac asked, are you really my son Esau? And Jacob answered, oh, he lies. And he goes, yes, I am. Then Isaac said, bring me the food. I will eat it and bless you. So Jacob gave him the food and Isaac ate it. And Jacob gave him the wine and he drank. And then Isaac said to me, said to him, my son, come near and kiss me. So Jacob went to his father and kissed him. And Isaac smelled Esau's clothes and blessed him. Isaac said, the son of my, the smell of my son is like the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you plenty of rain and good soil. Then you will have plenty of grain and wine. May nations serve you. May peoples bow down to you. May you be master over your brothers. May your mother's sons bow down to you. May everyone who curses you be cursed. And may everyone who blesses you be blessed. Isaac finished blessing Jacob. Then just as Jacob left his father Isaac, Esau came in from hunting. Esau also prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. And he said, Father, rise and eat the food that your son killed for you, and then you can bless me. Isaac said, Who are you? He answered, I am your son, your firstborn son Esau. Then Isaac trembled greatly, and he said, Then who was it that hunted the animals and brought me food before you came? I ate it, and I blessed him. And it's too late now to take back my blessing. When Esau heard the words of his father, he let out a loud and bitter cry. He said to his father, 
bless me too, father, bless me. But Isaac said, your brother came and tricked me. He has taken your blessing. Esau said, Jacob is the right name for him. He has tricked me. He took everything away from me. And now he has taken away my blessing. Then Esau asked, haven't you saved a blessing for me? Isaac answered, I gave Jacob the power to be master over you and all his brothers will be his servants. And I kept him strong with grain and wine. There's nothing left for me to give you, my son. Then Esau continued, do you have only one blessing, father? Bless me too, father. Then Esau began to cry out loud. Isaac said to him, you will live far away from the best land, far from the rain. You will live by using your sword and be a slave to your brother. But when you struggle, you will break free from him. After that, Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing from Isaac. Esau thought to himself, my father will soon die and I will be sad. But after that, I will kill Jacob. Rebecca heard about Esau's plan to kill Jacob, so she sent for Jacob and she said, Listen, your brother Esau is comforting himself by planning to kill you. Go, son, do what I say. My brother Laban is living in Haran. Go to him at once. Stay with him for a while until your brother is not so angry. In time, your brother will not be angry. He'll forget what you did to him. Then I will send a servant to bring you back. I don't want to lose both of my sons on the same day. So Jacob runs away. Jacob runs away. Oh my goodness, what a trick. What has been happening here? And we are going to fast forward in our story. We're going to get glimpses into Jacob's story tomorrow too. But we're, Jacob gets married. Jacob has these ups and these downs. He becomes a shepherd. And then we're fast forwarding to chapter 33. Chapter 33 of Genesis. Jacob hears that Esau is drawing near and he's going to encounter his brother for the first time in a really long time. And Jacob is talking to God and he, he is just struggling and something special happens in that he actually wrestles with God. God comes in human form and Jacob and this man who he doesn't know is God are wrestling in the night and Jacob goes, I need you to bless me. I need you to bless me. And that story is in chapter 32, if you want to read it for yourself. And in that moment, God touched Jacob's hip and like dislocated it so that Jacob would limp the rest of his life. And also God blesses Jacob and changes his name to Israel, right? Because you can't have an encounter with Jesus and not be changed, right? So his name changes after this encounter. And so now Jacob has had this encounter with God and he goes, okay, I can meet my brother Esau again. So now chapter 33, verse one, Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming and with him were 400 men. So Jacob divided his children among Leah, Rachel, and the two slave girls. Jacob put the slave girls with their children first and then he put Leah and her children behind him and he put Rachel and Joseph last and Jacob himself went out in front of him and he bowed down flat on the ground seven times as he was walking toward his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob. Esau put his arms around him and hugged him. Then Esau kissed him and they both cried. Esau looked up and saw the women and children. He asked, who are these people with you? Jacob answered, these are the children God has given me. God has been good to me, your servant. So then the two slave girls and their children came up to Esau and they bowed down flat on the earth before him. Then Leah and her children came up to Esau and they bowed down flat on the earth. And last of all, Joseph and Rachel came up to Esau and they too bowed down flat before him. And Esau said, I saw many herds as I was coming here. Why did you bring them? Jacob answered, they were to please you, my master. But Esau said, I already have enough, my brother. Keep what you have. Jacob said, no, please, if I've pleased you, then please accept this gift that I give you. It is like seeing the face of God because you have accepted me. So I beg you to accept this gift I give you. God has been good to me and I have more than I need. And because Jacob begged, Esau accepted the gift. Then Esau said, let us get going. I will travel with you. But Jacob said to him, My master, you know that the children are weak, and I must be careful with the flocks and their young ones. 
If I force them to go too far in a day, all the animals will die. So, my master, you go on ahead of me, your servant, and I'll follow you slowly. I will let the animals and the children set the speed at which we travel, and I'll meet you, my master, and eat them. So Esau said, Then let me leave some of my men with you. No, thank you, said Jacob. I only want to please you, my master. So that day Esau started back to Edom, but Jacob went to Succoth. That is where we are going to stop. And you can read more about their stories yourself. But, oh my goodness, can you imagine doing something where you've betrayed your sibling? And then you made them so angry that they wanted to kill you and you ran away. And then years go by and it's time to see him for the first time. And you're afraid that they still are angry and want to kill you, but they actually embrace and forgive you and show you that they love. Oh, what a relief that is. Can you think of a time when you made someone angry and had to ask for forgiveness? How did the other person respond? Oh, it's hard when we have to ask for forgiveness, isn't it? When we have to say, oh, I was wrong. I'm so sorry. Would you please forgive me? But it's really important to accept that responsibility, just like Jacob did. All right, so think about a time maybe that you made someone angry and you had to ask for forgiveness. And how did they respond? I hope that they responded like Esau and were forgiving you. All right, so we're going to say a quick prayer together and then we're going to do a little activity. All right. Dear God, thank you for the story of Jacob and Esau. Help us to remember to always forgive others and always to take that responsibility and ask forgiveness of others too when we are the ones who are, who are making the mistakes or making them angry or doing something that we need to take responsibility for. May we learn from the story of Jacob and Esau how important it is to have peace and love in our relationships with each other and to not act out of deceit or lying and running away from from problems. May we continue to learn these lessons and we thank you for your love in your name. Amen. Now, when Jacob wrestled with God, he had an encounter with God and he was changed and his name became Israel. And what are we going to keep hearing over and over and over again in the Bible? The children of Israel, the children of Israel, the Israelites. That's Jacob. That's Jacob. All right, so if you could change your name to anything, what would it be? If you could pick your name. So just for fun, I want you to think of what name you would pick for yourself. Or if you could change your name to something. Maybe it's a pretend funny name. And maybe you make yourself a name tag. And for one day, you go by your new name. Just as a way of what would it have been like to go from Jacob to Israel to have a new name. I know that when I was little, my sister, she didn't know how to say Kelly. So she called me, you ready? Gulliga. Gulliga? That to me is harder to say than Kelly, but that is what she would call me as a kid. Gulliga! Gulliga! Now, I am very content to not go by that name anymore. But as a fun activity, I challenge you, what name would you pick for yourself and maybe go by that name for a day and just see how, how fun it is and to remember that we can't have an encounter with Jesus and not be changed in some way. All right. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow.